Okay, let's, let's get started. So I do want to welcome everyone here today on behalf of the Lewis Stokes Midwest Regional Center for Excellence. We welcome you to today's session titled Virtual Summer Experience for Early Research Programs. So this is an alliance-wide approach to engaging early researchers. My name is Dr. Melanie Eden Spencer, and I will be serving as a session moderator. I'm pleased to be here today <laughs> from Chicago. Um, where I connect to the LSAMP program as um, a member of an alliance. Um, my school, um, Prairie State College, a community college in the south suburbs of Chicago, is in an alliance with Chicago State LSAMP program. And I actually am an alum of LSAMP. I participated back in the, year, in the 90s <laughs> at Alabama State University. So proud graduate and alum participant of the program. Now, before we introduce today's speaker, I want to, speakers, I want to make sure that you guys all have the time. I need to make sure we provide some general housekeeping items for our audience. So this session is being recorded and will be made available for viewing through the um, Hoover app by next Wednesday. So maybe it's not ready today, but by next Wednesday it will be. Now, I ask that you provide your feedback about today's session by using the post-session survey that you, you find, um, I'll put it in the chat before we're done. And if you have any questions for the presenters, um, make sure that you put them in the, do we, I think we have the chat feature um, allowed, or, or you can go to the Hoover app and put in the questions. I see that there have been some already submitted, so we'll make sure we try to address those. Now, this session is scheduled to take place from um, two until three, and we want to leave some time for Q&A, so we're going to make sure that we allow the time for that. Now, at this time, I will allow you to introduce yourselves in the order that I see you on my screen. So I have um, Mary first, and I'll allow you to do the full introduction. Sure. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Mary Darrow from Iowa State University, Assistant Director of the Inspire LSAMP. Alliance, which is an alliance uh, in three states in the Midwest, Iowa, Illinois, and Nebraska. And um, that's probably my introduction. Thank Did you. Did you want anything else? No, that, that's fine right now. We'll just let everyone introduce and then I'll, we'll start over to talk about your programs. Um, next we have Lori. Hi everyone, I'm Lori Adams. I'm at the University of Iowa in the Department of Biology and I'm a campus co-director for the Iowa LSAMP program at the University of Iowa. And it's great to be here, thanks. Thank you, Lori. Um, Leanne. Hi, my name's Leanne Fadley. I am the campus director for Inspire at Wartburg College, which is a four-year private liberal arts school in Northeast Iowa. And uh, I teach engineering as my real job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Latisha. Good day, everyone. I'm Latisha Hilton, and I was the project coordinator for the LSAMP program at the University of Northern Iowa. And my focus area is um, mathematics and student retention. Oh, thank you. So I, I'm, I, my area is mathematics too. I, I failed to mention that, but I am um, in mathematics. All right, so we'll start with you, Mary, to tell us about your program. Um, and like I said, we do have questions that I will reserve those questions until the end. And then the way that you, the order that you introduced yourselves um, will let you talk about your programs. So go ahead. So you've already seen the introductions. Um, we're talking today about the virtual summer experience for early research. We call it the Vasir program. And it was an alliance-wide program for engaging early researchers that we implemented, um, piloted last summer in the summer of 20, 2021. And you see the four presenters today representing four of our institutions and um, our website if you want to learn more about our alliance. Next. So our alliance is a three-state alliance, including 16 institutions. We have 
um, what we call Regents institutions, our four-year public institutions, several um, four-year private institutions, several community colleges, and um, one tribal college. So a very diverse group of institutional types, which I like to say is sort of the challenge and also the strength of our alliance. And we've been together since 2012. Next. So a little background. Again, I'm the assistant director for the alliance. So I'm giving the background and kind of the big picture moving into the program description. We were funded in 2012. Our objectives have really focused on um, developing and sustaining what we call student experience models at each local campus. So really kind of a centralized or decentralized approach where campuses are sort of leveraging their local resources and creating programs at the local level. And then we do some things collectively like our annual conference. And then um, sharing mostly occurred pre-COVID at the regional level, primarily between two and four year institutions and among various institutional types. For example, you know, the four year privates did quite a bit of work early on with bridge programs. So we've had some collaboration across institutions, but not as much as we are currently doing. So next slide. So in 2020, like all of us, we were forced into virtual research. We did that sort of on the fly in the summer of 2020 um, and offered a virtual research program across our alliance, um, sort of building the plane as we fly it sort of approach. And then um, in 2021, we had a more cohesive intentional virtual research program developed by a committee that we worked on throughout the year. And in, in the summer of 21, we piloted this program, which is what we're presenting today. So this is what our program model looks like now. Um, it was an eight week um, June and July program, 10 hours a week. Students received a $1,000 stipend. We had 18 students across eight institutions, three pairs of instructors. Um, the presenters today representing each of those pairs, but they were paired with another instructor. So we had a total of six co-instructors for this model across six institutions. And then uh, we had a research team that did a pre and post STEM identity survey, which we'd love to talk more about, but the publication is pending. So kind of a novel approach where students took a STEM identity survey at the beginning of the program and at the end of the program to show not only programmatic progress in terms of STEM identity factors, but also individual profiles. So I think that's fairly novel. And then the intended audience for this program really is among our institutions. Um, so students from Inspire LS AMP institutions. And I know some of the questions, Melanie, were from students wanting to apply to the program. So I tried to answer a few of those, but that might resolve several of the questions in the chat because it is right now just across our alliance. So we're hoping to share it with other alliances. And then um, these students may or may not have research, but looking at that early research experience, really any level in their academic career. Last summer we had students that were early community college and we also had seniors at four year, but you know, really the critical piece is that they don't, haven't done much, if any research. And then again, two and four year institutions. Next. So the logistics, again, it's pretty complicated across 16 institutions, but we had a design committee and that included several of the people here. We met weekly last year up to the summer program. We did a needs assessment, lessons learned from 2020, designed the model, looked at evaluation, um, orchestrated recruitment across the Alliance and planned an orientation at the start of the program. And then during the program, we had an implementation committee and that also met weekly and include, included the design committee, and then also campus directors that had students in the program because we wanted to have them supporting 
and mentoring the students at the local level while the students were participating in the program. So the design committee plus campus directors and mentors met weekly throughout the eight week period. We had instructional teams and I've talked a little bit about that and you're gonna hear next from one member from each of those teams. So the instructional teams included the core course and that today will be talked about by Leanne Fadley, the virtual lab visits. And again, that was a team and that will be discussed by Lori Adams and then community building was another component and that'll be discussed by Latricia Hilton. Of course, there's support staff, um, technical support and administrative support. So that comes from our Alliance office and then evaluation and continuous improvement um, moving forward. So the goals, um, again, early research training for students in virtual environments, providing exposure to research approaches, approaches across disciplines. We were very intentional about being inclusive of majors across STEM areas. So that was important because of the nature of the program being early research. So giving students lots of exposure, creating an environment where research could be understood in the context of culture. That was really in the community building piece, but threaded throughout sort of this inclusive pedagogy and attention to um, cultural identity. Next. Building community again among program participants with um, key alliance agents and mentors. So again, community building, mentoring, having them connect on their campus with either researchers or their campus directors and mentors as a part of the program. And then develop participant STEM identity in the context of student intersectionality. We did some things on you know, the intersectionality of identity, which was part of community building, and then deepen students' understanding of the purpose of LSAMP. So a lot going on. We're gonna get into some of the specifics. Um, this is the program model. In year one, we implemented this blue arrow. So the course, the virtual lab visits, the community building, and then all the students did an experiential poster. And then in the coming year, we're looking to add this research component, which we're still figuring out, but um, an individual research project or disciplinary cohort research discussions, we're still meeting and planning that second piece. So this year, just the core, next year, core plus research. And with that, I think, we go on to the presentation that. on the course. So Leanne Fadley will talk about the course. So um, my partner was Janice, who was at Little Priest Tri uh, Tribal College in Nebraska. And so we were charged with taking care of the course part of this. So the more the academic part of things. Um, our goals for our students was, were to allow them to see themselves as STEM researchers, researchers. So working on understanding research to the point where they can see themselves in that role. Um, we wanted them to identify in the quanti qualities and the skills that STEM researchers would need and start seeing those skills and qualities in themselves or ways to develop those in the future. Um, we were looking at the, the various parts of a STEM research project while keeping it general enough to incorporate everything from qualitative to quantitative, from experimental to field studies, to um, bench studies, to uh, the quality, quantitative analysis, computerized models, things of this sort. So we were trying to keep it broad, but also get them familiar with the language of STEM research so that when people, when, if they get, when they get into a research experience and somebody's talking about something being peer reviewed, our students know what that means. Uh, the difference between a postdoc and a graduate student, right? These things that are not um, necessarily obvious to those of us who have not lived in this area, in this domain for so long. 
In order to do this, we looked at the requirements for the course. We, are we were looking for a course that would be a flipped course. So the idea being that they work on the material before an asynchronous section or a synchronous session where we discuss and do activities and then there's a homework type activity at the end. We were looking for something that, that took up about five hours of, of uh, time and was engaging enough to keep them working on it on their own. Um, it needed to be accessible content, both in the fact that it needed to be easily accessed by everyone and in the sense that everybody needed to feel like they could understand and relate to how things were presented. We wanted to center the experience of underrepresented researchers as much as possible. Uh, we wanted to scaffold our material so that it was clear to the students how the experimental methods are dependent on the research question and on responsible conduct of research and things of that sort, that, that, that everything was linked together. Um, we wanted to keep students accountable for completing their work and we wanted to teach transferable skills. So even if they don't end up in a research area, they have learned some things about themselves and about how to learn how to study that would be transferable. So we had eight weeks, we had eight, eight weekly modules. They were governed by the questions that are numbered on the left. Um, the content was started with what is research, right? So researcher, research researchers, descriptions. Then we talked about research questions and mentors and the importance of mentors. We talked about how do you find and read technical papers. We talked about responsible conduct of research. And then we got into experimental design, data collection, data interpretation. And we ended with talking about presentations, posters, and papers with the emphasis on posters, which they created then from the work we were doing. Each of these modules what had three components. The first part was the before class stuff, which was in Canvas. The students logged in and worked through the module, which included several cycles of a video or written content, and then a reflection question, asking them to draw connections with that content or to um, make a personal observation about that content. The content we used, the video and written content was primarily from this group called Vision Learning. They are an online uh, resource. They provide free resources for people to learn science and to learn about science. Um, there's a lot of wonderful information out there on that website. And so I highly recommend anybody wanting to look into that. There's some really neat stuff there. Um, we were focused on their understanding research module, which was a series of videos. We didn't use all of them and we did them in a different order, but they were great videos to, to base our conversations around. In class, we, had, we were scheduled for an hour of synchronous virtual class on the Zoom uh, that we met Monday afternoons. Um, and we started with sort of a review or a summary of what, was, what the content was in the module, and then we went into discussion or activities that reinforced that concept or that content and let students work through things with each other. It was also a great time for announcements and reminders about the other aspects of the program that were happening that week, since this was the first touch point with the students in a week. After class, we looked at a series of assignments which were scaffolded along with the topics. Um, and the result would be the experimental, uh, experimental experiential poster that um, they ended up presenting at the end of the experience. And so I wanna look a little bit more depth on those assignments. We, we called it profile of myself or profile of student's name as a STEM researcher. And we started week one where we were talking about qualities of a researcher. We helped them build a LinkedIn profile and then start 
populating it with the things they're interested in, the kind of position they're looking for as far as research and those kinds of things. So week two, we had them use LinkedIn to find a potential mentor and to write a draft letter to that mentor asking for summer experience. Um, they didn't send it this year, but chances are one of these years they will be writing such a letter and sending it off. Um, in week four, we talked about responsible conduct of research. We had them take the reverse and in whatever area they're interested in, go and find an irresponsible conduct of research and do a case summary. Uh, then five and six, we went, uh, sorry, I skipped three. Um, we had them go, they picked this mentor, then we had them find a paper by that research group to read. And the first time we sort of, we just read it, there was a worksheet they went through on reading a journal paper. In week five and six, we went back to that paper and we looked at the specific methods in that paper, the specific results in that paper. And then we made a draft of the poster and had the final poster and presentations in week eight. This is the layout of the poster. This was my draft, right? And so the students got to modify and change colors and everything else. Um, but it generally has several components. The, the about me section was about the student. Who are you? Where are you coming from? What are your, what's your background? How are your, how are your identities intersecting in a way that supports your research area, those kinds of things. On the far left side was the Vasir impact. What did they learn about themselves, about STEM, about research, about identity, all of these pieces. The center piece is called uh, learning research through example. And so that's where all of those pieces about the technical paper and the lab and all of those pieces fit, right? So they went back to, uh, week two and described the lab that they were looking at. They went back to week week three and summarized the technical paper. Week five gave you they them the methods, results, etc. And then there's also a section for their most interesting virtual lab, which you'll hear about in a moment, and the impactful community building, which we'll, you'll hear about after that. So this was geared at people, uh, at students who were in just the core, right? So those three pieces plus the poster. We did have a few students who were also in the Rise Up program and they were doing research with mentors. And so we can modify this and the purple then replaces those aspects. And so instead of finding a paper from some theoretical lab you want to work with, you're reading a paper from the lab you're working in. You're talking about your own experimental methods or that of your, your mentors, and you're talking about your own results instead of what was in the paper. Um, but overall, very similar structure and it's a very easy way to switch between those students who are just doing the core and those students who are doing research as well as the core. All right, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take it from here to talk about the virtual lab tour component. Um, so again, I'm Lori Adams. I'm at the University of Iowa, and my partner and my co-instructor in this was Angela, Dr. Angela McKinney, and she's from Nebraska Wesleyan University. And so one of the the things here with the virtual lab experience was how do we have an, a, an experience when it's virtual? How do we get a sense of what does research look like? Um, outside of the course content that they're learning in, in the course that Leanne just described, how can we um, get like a peek inside of different research labs uh, to showcase what, what kinds of research is, are, um, and problems that are being solved and, and everything. And so that would, I would say was an overarching goal here with this component with the virtual lab tour. And then more specifically, um, and you'll see this in the next slide, but it, by talking through, talking with um, researchers at different institutions, working on different types of problems in different fields, um, a goal was to identify questions that researchers are currently studying and asking just simply the breadth of the types of research um, areas that one could be interested in. Because our, our majors were very broad, uh, ranging from you know astronomy to 
biology, um, psychology, there was, and math. There was a very wide range of student majors in the group with different interests. Um, and so with that, students were able to compare and contrast different approaches that are used in STEM research. Um, we talked about field research, and then there, we got into a tour of an engineering virtual lab facility. So again, one thing I would emphasize here was this, uh, a goal was to showcase the breadth of research going on. Um, and yet there were some foundational ideas that unite across all um, aspects of STEM research. And so that, that became apparent the more and more students started hearing about the uh, different approaches that researchers were taking. Um, there were some, some foundational ideas and, and we found that in some of the reflections later. Um, and then lastly here, the, part, of the pro part of the tour, and I'll talk about that in a minute, more was that the person giving the tour, the researcher giving the tour was also generous in sharing some of their personal stories and, and their career paths. And so, and, and a lot of talking about what motivated them, where there may have been barriers to their career path. And so that was a, another portion um, that was a, a goal and, and uh, an outcome of this project with the virtual lab tours. So I'll go to the next slide. That gets more into the nuts and bolts of what does the structure of this look like. So on the right hand side, you can see that um, through weeks one through eight, um, with the exception of the first week where we really sat down and talked about um, introductions and set expectations um, for what was going to happen, the structure was that each week we had a different guest from a different campus um, doing research and really representing a different area of STEM research um, each week. And students were um, asked to post, uh, they read a bio of the speaker and then they were asked to post a discussion board question um, or two for the speaker and the speakers were given those ahead of time so they could get a sense of what students were interested in. But when it came time for the tour, um, the, the, the person leading the tour would literally take their phone or iPad and walk around their space. And, and it was a way to really see inside these spaces that um, I guess from my own personal experience being on a, on a college campus the first time, I didn't know what they did on those second, third and fourth floors of the buildings um, I never saw up there. And so this was a way to kind of see inside those spaces. Um, and then each week, the students also uh, submitted a short reflection assignment. So really trying to take in what was this information? How is it meaningful to me? Um, and then and write about that. And they, you know, short, maybe 300 word reflections. But uh, I think that was an important component for the students to take part in. Um, so that they could really have a moment to reflect in what, you know, what did they learn that was new? What was surprising? Um, what was something they hadn't expected to hear before and learn about. And so those were reflections. And so you'll see for the assignments, um, they were um, primarily in the form of written reflections each week. And one thing I do wanna highlight for a moment, so as we're looking at that right-hand table, um, was just, again, going through this, the speakers. Uh, Professor Weiland, for example, is our Kirkwood Community College um, campus director for the LSAMP Alliance there. And in the summers, this is a two-year uh, community college. He takes part in research at the University of Iowa with a chemistry professor. And so he was in, in the lab space with a student from Kirkwood too in the LSAMP program, and they were kind of show, showcasing inside the lab and talking about their experiences. Um, and then each week as we go through the Eastern Iowa Community College um, has a partnership with the Nahant Marsh and we have a campus LSAMP campus co-director there as well. And um, we had again, University of Iowa uh, and then Nebraska Wesleyan, um, someone from industry from Neogen then further down um, a mathematician in computer modeling from the University of Northern Iowa. And then finally at Iowa State, we had the virtual reality um, center and, and, and an engineer from there taking us on a tour. So once again, highlighting the range of research experiences that the students were exposed to and the range of institution types as well being represented, including industry. So I guess we'll go to the next slide. And just some highlights. Um, well, for me each week, and I, I know that the students appreciated this too, as we'll see from the reflections later, 
Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see uh, there's just a strip of all of our Zoom windows, um, but in the middle, uh, you can see we had our speaker from the Nahat Marsh um, holding a radio telemeter there, and this is a way in which they track um, turtle movement. There's an endangered species of turtle that lives in the Nahant Marsh. And so we were able to see, and he's sitting in the field um, holding that device and really sort of we're peering into that space and getting to see what, what research looks like out there in the field. Um, on the right hand side, I just chose another example. This is um, inside the laboratories at the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. And on the bottom, is a little screenshot, it's a little grainy, but from the tour of, again, the, the researcher, this was uh, Dr. Hinton, I believe, who was walking us through the hallways and just really showing around, you could see people sitting, um, the, the, the busy nature of a lab space. And again, these were just um, to me, and I think the students highlights to be able to just see inside those spaces. So now I believe I'll turn it over to Latricia about community building. Good afternoon, everyone. The community building aspect of the program occurred on Thursday afternoon. And our focus was to serve as a space and community for, and I say you, for the students to build relationships with their peers and, and the staff. We also wanted to provide a launch pad for the students to um, help in their academic, professional, and social relationships. So we were thinking long-term. We weren't thinking about this from the aspect of just that summer. We were thinking about what the Alliance goals are long-term and how we could um, provide students um, opportunities now with de developing relationships that they could um, follow up with on their campuses when they return. And we also want to provide community of, of, a community of facilitators as resources in their, in their chain and network. And we wanted to have a counter space for students to solidify their sense of belonging in STEM. And as the next um, slide um, shows you, what we also wanted to do is um, we structured the community building in a way that um, we had small and large group discussions. We had reading readings that the students had to do. So there were some articles that the students had to focus, read through and then reflect on. Or when we had discussions, they had to pull from that. And they had reflection assignments. One of the things that we wanted to make a critical component of um, the program. And as you see throughout all three components was writing. We wanted to give students the opportunity to write, to reflect. And so they had individual submissions, but they also had small group submissions. Again, um, mimicking what they would do in the laboratory in every aspect with, they had their own individual work, but they also had opportunities to collaborate. And um, we wanted to make sure the students had decompression time because of the fact of how um, some of the topics that we dealt with were very personal and difficult topics um, for some of the students, and I'll show you that. Um, and so we had some guiding principles because of the approach that we wanted to um, have in the community building. We wanted the students to be authentic, and so we upfront told them, "You have this is your space where you are able to be authentic, to be yourself." And we um, basically also told them that they're to speak from their own experience, um, that they're not responsible for anyone's voice, but their own, and that um, they're to listen respectfully and give people their own space to voice and speak, even though they may not agree or that may not be their lived experience, and um, that they were fully responsible, responsible to that community. So if there was something that they were supposed to do in preparation for meeting with the group or meeting with the class, we were going to hold them accountable for that as a um, community. So that was important for us to, to do that. So when you look over on the other side, the topics that we covered were um, combating isolation and also community communicating their identity. That was something that was really important important for us. And then on the next slide, we talk about um, some of the highlights from the community building session. And so and I'll come back to some of those um, there. But on the, the next slide that we have, 
um, on community building. One of the things that um, I wanna highlight and basically give you a snippet of what were some of the things that we did in the, the community building. I'm gonna have you watch a two um, minute video and then we'll um, have you look at the prompts that we had from that video. I come from, when I say working class, I mean people who worked in the dirt, people who cut, um, you know, the meat off of hogs all day. Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't, I don't come from people who put on airs or felt ever any need to put on airs. And I realized very early on, one thing about being bused into white schools starting in the second grade is you quickly learn these folks are not smarter than you, they just have more advantage than you mm -hmm. do. It disabuses you. Mm, mm, mm. I was the smartest kid, and I'm not bragging, it's just a fact, I was the smartest kid in that school. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want me in that school because I was low income and black and from the wrong side of town. Mm -hmm. The benefit of that to me though, was I've never had to feel intimidated or uncomfortable mm -hmm. or like I didn't belong. Mm -hmm. And I decided long time ago, People are going to discriminate against me because I'm black no matter how I present. Mm. I can try to talk like them. Mm. I can try to wear my mm. hair like them. Mm. I can do all of that. Mm. Mm. It's not going to change a single mm. way that they treat me or their mm. expectations of me or what they think about me. So mm. I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to be my black self from Waterloo. Mm. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yes. This, Yes. I dress like this because I like this. Mm. I like this. Mm. I, it is comfortable to me. Mm. I love one of the things I love about black people is our sense of style and flair. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, I just decided I wasn't going to try to tamp that down because mm. even when I did, it didn't work. Mm. And what I tell young folks all the time, I say don't give up, but I say you still might not make it. Mm. And that's the truth. Mm. There were mm. a lot of folks, smart black folks, brown mm. folks, mm who didn't give up and still couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. And you could not give up, but you may never end up where I am mm -hmm. or where you are. Mm -hmm. But what is important is if you make it, make it intact. Mm -hmm. Don't have given yourself up to get there mm -hmm. because then it won't be worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm from so this Waterloo, is a Iowa. Snippet from um, Nicole Hannah-Jones. Um, um, and she was in the news. So we tried to keep everything relevant. And so the prompt that we had after this, after the student watched this video, we wanted them to think about what she said in the quote. And so those students had a time to reflect and write about how, what she said about not making it because it's difficult being in STEM, but being a multicultural student in STEM and the implication that had for them. And um, we had a previous discussion on identity. So this really played into that. So that gives you a snippet of how the community building session um, went and the content. We really did cover identity and culture. So I'll move on. We're just, we have a couple of um, results sections and we're, this, these are some results from um, the virtual lab. So I'm jumping in to talk about that now, and then we'll come back to each of the other components. Um, but as I had mentioned earlier, there were reflections for the virtual lab tour segment of this um, course. And so these were just a few highlights. I did, I went ahead and de-identified, but these are professor experts. <laughs> Professor Y or Dr. Y and Dr. Z are three different people just to give a representative sample of the different kinds of things that students brought up. Um, one talks about, um, and as I mentioned, the, the, the tour leaders were generous in talking about and sharing some of their stories and their career paths. And in the first comment, um, talking about how the, his parents um, were, he was the first uh, generations to attend college and, and the, the, the student was connecting with the, the person leading the tour and talking about that, um, that the parents not understanding the concepts of graduate school and so on and so forth. So this, there was that connection um, with the tour guide um, in the next one below, um, Dr. Y gave us great advice. Um, she talked about keeping an open mind. It's okay if you're not 100% sure. So there was a lot of this 
um, not realizing not everybody has it figured out. Um, and these are, these are people that are professors or, you know, leaders in the industry, and they didn't know what they wanted to do when they first set out. And that was a common theme. And I, something that students, um, it, it was uh, something they noticed. And I think we're happy to hear that there was not always the certainty of what they wanted to do when they started out. And then the last one with Dr. Z, um, you know, in terms of, there were a lot of things talked about in this comment in terms of um, not being afraid of failure. If you, if you don't succeed, keep trying. Um, not everyone has a straight path in what they want to do and that's okay. Um, and then also um, uh, emphasizing applying to anything you find interesting, even if you think you don't qualify. And so again, some of those, those were some of the, the strongest messages that resonated from students. Um, we're really hearing about the career paths of the speakers um, um, in addition to seeing inside some of the research spaces. So I wanted to show you just a couple of samples of the posters that students uh, created and presented. Um, some changed colors and some didn't, and there were some very unique ones as well. Um, they, I picked these two uh, for no particular reason, but um, they're representative. The top one uh, is the poster of a student who is interested in neuroscience. Um, and he found a paper that was about um, biological neuroscience things that this engineer does not understand. But <laughs> he, he got into it and figured things out um, and came to sort of the, the explained the conclusion that um, stress factors were effective survival rate. Um, what was interesting over in the impact, we saw a, not, a lot of the sentiments that Lori and Latricia saw in theirs, right? So that he learned about himself that he now believes that research is something I can see myself doing. Um, the other poster was from a computer scientist and he read a paper about test-driven development. Don't ask me what it is. It was all his. Um, but what I saw, found striking was these, the students were talking with, working with our amazing people. Um, he is a first-generation American. And when we asked about his goals, he said he wants to, uh, he wants to create positive change in Togo, which was his parents' uh, native country. And um, to echo some of those um, same sentiments, I'm going to focus here on the, the identity development. Um, there were some really um, pivotal points in our discussion in the community building where we did our intersectionality bouquet. And the students had the opportunity to think deeply about each and every one of their identities and how that um, actually makes them who they are. And so in this first comment, the student highlighted that um, while the assignment and all of the out, out of class work are supposed to be helpful, um, she said that um, she do be believe that um, the discussions in lab would have been better. And so, but the thing that I wanna highlight here is she said, during the Thursday discussion, I have learned the importance of how your culture and identity can affect you, whether you like it or not. Because one of the things the students um, realized was that they never actually took into consideration how their culture would impact their, their career in both positive ways and negative ways. And um, sometimes their institutions didn't give them that opportunity and being in the classroom did not give them that opportunity to really think about it. And so this sense of pride came out of some of the um, students uh, because we asked them to do a assignment where they did a generations assignment and they basically built their family tree, but they built their family tree in the aspect of thinking about their family's previous um, economic and also um, professional history and how that economic and professional history is um, influencing them now. So um, for one student, it said they helped them develop a sense of pride. And then the third person um, is the person that um, you said during the course, I have been able to reflect on the characteristics that represent what my culture is. And they talked about the 
the intersectionality bouquet that they had to do. And it's how it helped them to understand the many aspects that represent who, that per, who he is and um, that they were able to reflect deeply on the different components. And now they see the connection of how their culture and what they value and the social norms that they are carrying out and living out actually um, is being influenced by what their cultural experience is. Okay, so we also looked at results in relation to the design team learning. So the people you see here presenting, as well as I noticed Janice Woodward, Woodward is on from Little Priest Tribal College. Hey, Janice. So, you know, the design team, very diverse across multiple institutions. And, and we were really struck by what we learned by working together. So one is problem-based learning. We were immersed in this project together across institutions with lots of different institutional contexts and needs. Um, we had different visions coming together. So again, very dynamic, very fluid, um, trying to meet a lot of different student needs from different contexts. It created synergy and excitement. The, the team definitely wants to continue working together. We haven't done this kind of collective project where we're building something together, bringing in different institutional types and context. We practice virtual inclusive pedagogy. You heard that in the presentation today. So again, that I think was a, was a result. And then learning from our students, of course, you know, engaging them in different ways. And um, our eyes were open to how much of their lived experience are, we're at there as to relinquish in the name of academics and STEM study. So uh, we're excited as a team and learning together. And I think that was one of the exciting parts of the project. So as you've, as is true of any pilot, there's a lot of future directions that we have in the works and what we're looking at. The big piece for this coming summer is to implement the core plus program, which includes the, the research experience. We also want to look, uh, we saw that the beginning of a research project where we looked at pre and post survey measurements and had students get, a, had the researchers created a profile of a student. And eventually we'd like to see that shared with the students so they can reflect on the impact on their um, self-identity as a STEM scientist. Um, we want to involve more students, more campus directors. Um, we had half of our institutions involved, so we have another half to um, build in. Uh, we wanted to use this. We have an Alliance Research Certificate Program that has been developed for, for a number of years, but hasn't been used as much as we'd like to see it. And we think that the VSEER program could be a good launch pad for that um, certificate. We want to do a better job of implementing a full program evaluation so that we can learn about our program. And we're going to obviously make some corrections with communication and things of this sort amongst all of the groups so that we all have a shared vision and of the program's goals and expectations. To talk a little bit about the the core plus idea. We're going to bring it in on, in summer of 2020, 22, which is not very many months away. Um, the core plus is going to include an optional research component. So the idea is that students can enter the program and only do the course labs and community building like this past summer or they can enter the program and do those three things as well as some sort of research experience. Um, it will still be eight weeks. We're looking, if you're doing the research part, you're adding 10 more hours a week and you're adding 1500 more dollars to your stipend. Um, we will have four paid VSEER instructors covering the course, the tours and the community building, which you just heard about, and then coordinating the research piece. And then the Alliance office will be working again with coordination and facilitation. We still are deciding on how we're gonna handle the research piece. Um, and there's a variety of options out there. One way, one option is to 
pair students with a virtual ment a mentor through a virtual environment, not a virtual mentor. But um, so pairing them up sort of like the traditional method, but for a virtual project, which allows students to be wherever they happen to be in the country. Um, another possibility is to have students close to their home institution and their research is done in person with mentors at their home institution. A third option is a very different uh, approach, which is course-based research. That model adapted for a summer program. And so the idea there is you have a shared context. Um, so the background reading is all the same for everyone. And then each student selects a project related to their interests within that context. And as far as identity exploration, one of our goals was that we wanted to create an environment where students could understand research in, con in, in contextually with culture. And so one of the assignments that the students completed in the, um, the community building component was that they were asked to think about a problem in their community and how they would be able to solve it. And so one of the things that we want to do um, when it comes to identity exploration, we want to look at the pre and post survey results that students have dealing with their identity in STEM and how can we have that continue and use that thread as campus directors as um, the academic year continues and to continue doing the research and follow up with the students to see the impact that this experience actually had for them in the summer. And one of those things that we are planning to use here is on this side, this is a sample student profile um, survey result that we have. And it just informs us of where the student is, um, the, the solid dot, and then the, the circular broken circle that um, shows where the capacity that the student has. And so we could use that to build off of how we mentor them on their college campus during the academic year. So that's what we would like to do. I think we have five minutes left for some questions maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I don't think we, well, we can take maybe <laughs> one question, but we actually um, need to make sure that we could start the next session on time and it starts in five minutes, so. Okay. Um, one of the, so one of the questions um, you did answer, Mary, about, you know, the, the alliance, actually the students had to be a part of the alliance, right? So you answered questions about what are some of the topics covered? Um, and the next one too is when can they start applying? And actually the students still have to be a part of the alliance, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if yeah. you're in this alliance, students apply yeah. to the program. Mm -hmm. And do you offer scholarships? There's a stipend associated with the program. Yes. And it does appear that it will be available this summer. Um, and I think this was really a mix up of what this, this um, session was about. A student did ask, how many can we apply to? Summer program, I believe they were asking. So Again, thank you to the presenters for this session. Um, students, if you do have questions of the presenter or anyone who's attending, you may post it in the um, Hoover app there. And also they did provide their information, um, their contact information. So thank you everyone for attending and I look forward to seeing you at the rest of the conference. So take care. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Thanks everyone. Bye -bye.